Air Forte on KUPS Tacoma. I'm Connor Wilson. And I'm Bryce Silver Bates. Each week on our show, we bring you the sounds of rare and unique instruments from around the globe. This week, we'll be talking about some of the electronic instruments that have been created in the last century, demonstrating the enormous impact that the rapid acceleration of digital technology has had on the world of music. I'll be talking about the theremin and the on Montenot, both of which were invented in 1928. And I'll be talking about several other electronic instruments, including the eigenharp, the iwi, and the tuka. We hope you enjoy this week's episode of Terra Forte. Thank you. 
theremin is perhaps unique among musical instruments in that it is played without touching it. It's a small box on a stand with two antennas coming out of it, one straight up and a loop-shaped one parallel with the floor. The vertical antenna controls the pitch and the horizontal one controls the volume. The theremin works on a variable capacitor principle with the player's hand acting as the ground plate. As the player moves their hand towards or away from the antenna, they change the impedance of the capacitor system, which results in the pitch or volume of the instrument changing. Here's a clip of Leon Theremin, the instrument's inventor, playing his own instrument. One of the first major players of the theremin was a woman named Clara Rockmore. At a time when a lot of critics had dismissed the theremin of being incapable of playing serious music, Clara Rockmore brought unmatched technical skill and artistry to the theremin, and really redeemed it in the minds of a lot of people. She was close friends with Leon Theremin for many years. Here's a couple examples of Clara Rockmore's skill on the theremin. First, here's Clara playing Summertime by George Gershwin.
Next, here's Clara Rockmore performing a piece by Rachmaninoff titled Vocalize. Welcome back to Terra Forte on KUPS Tacoma. For those just joining us, today we're talking about some of the electronic instruments that began to emerge in the early 20th century. One of these instruments was the onde Montenot, created by the French musician and inventor Maurice Montenot in 1928, the same year as the theremin. This instrument is somewhat similar in sound to the theremin, but operates very differently. It has a standard piano keyboard that can be used to play it, though it also has the ability to sl easily slide or glissando between notes using a flexible metal plate right in front of the keys. The player can press on this plate to produce a note equivalent to that place on the keyboard, or slide up and down to produce a glissando effect.
For most of the 20th century, the On Mortenot was under the radar, used here and there but never really catching on. One place it had some exposure was in French popular song in the 50s and 60s, as in this song by Leo Ferré, titled Les Hiboux. Despite a handful of artists using the On Matinot in their recordings, the instrument remained pretty much unknown until the year 2000, when Johnny Greenwood of the band Radiohead began experimenting with it and used it on several tracks on their album Kid A, released that year. Here's Johnny Greenwood talking about why he's drawn to the On Matinot. I think partly it's because I can't sing, and I've always wanted to be able to play an instrument that was okay. like singing. And there's nothing closer. Oh, yes. Just having that vibrato of the control. Also, I play um, viola. And I always very frustrated um, at doing vibrato on the viola. It feels so unnatural. It feels very awkward. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. But on the matinee, it feels very natural to be... It's just a very logical instrument. It's, mm-hmm, it's, it's, mm-hmm. Yes. It's such yes. a great idea and, you know, and, and yes. so musical to play. You know, it's not like yeah. other electronic instruments. No. I've got synthesizers, which are just... It just switches. You're just mm-hmm. turning switches on and mm-hmm. on, and it's not, it's not really... You can't put your personality into it, yes. like you can with a uh, violin or an oboe. Or This is the only electric instrument, I think, where you can do that.
was a live performance from 2001 of How to Disappear Completely by Radiohead from their album Kid A, featuring the Own Motino. You're listening to Terra Forte on KUPS Tacoma, and we'll be right back with more electronic instruments after this. Imagine not being able to read street signs. Use the telephone book. 
fill out an application, or read your child a bedtime story. 24% of Pierce County adult residents need basic literacy education. You can volunteer to make a difference in someone's life. Tacoma Area Literacy Council provides free assistance in basic literacy and English as a second language to adults through the use of volunteer tutors. Please call 253-272-2471 or register online at www.tacomaliteracy.org. The Tritonium was created in 1929, one year after the theremin and the En Martenon, by a German inventor named Friedrich Trontwein. In the 1950s, a German physicist and composer named Oskar Sala became an extremely skilled player of the Trontonium and, se and made several modifications to it. This instrument operates somewhat like a keyboard. However, rather than having keys, it has resonator, resonator wires that can be pressed down to touch a metal plate. The, the pitch can be modulated by varying the, the pressure with which the wires are pushed down. This instrument produces a rather unique waveform which allows for, for vibrato, quarter tones, or in-between notes that often sound strange to our ears, accustomed to 12, a 12-note 12 scale. Here's a piece on the Tritonium by Oscar Sala. This is a cover of the song Extreme Ways by Moby, performed by three people on eigenharps.
of Eigen Labs in England, the Eigen Harp is an instrument that possesses many buttons. So many buttons. <laughs> the keys actually act like joysticks and can be moved in six different directions in order to bend or modulate the pitch of a note. The instrument also has a wind controller, which essentially means its tone can be controlled by, a, by the breath, like a wind instrument. On larger instruments, there are keys that can be added that provide a percussion aspect to the sound produced. Um, a versatile instrument, the Eigenheart comes in multiple sizes, each possessing different key formats. What you're hearing now is a fairly modern instrument called the Iwi. wind instrument, the iwi can be described as a synthesizing saxophone. When played, the iwi resembles a soprano saxophone, as there is a slight bend in the neck after the mouthpiece, and the fingering is almost identical to that of a sax. However, more modern varieties of, uh, of the instrument can be switched to have fingering similar to a flute or a oboe. This instrument can be connected to either a synthesizer module or a computer, making it convenient, uh, a convenient instrument for recording. Usually, you'll hear this instrument being played by a group performing jazz, rock, fusion, or new age music. This next piece is a cover of Rihanna's song, Diamonds, performed by Stott Juru.
Welcome back to Terra Forte on KUPS 90.1 FM, The Sound. This next instrument, known as the tuca, was invented by a communications and a computer science professor at the University of British Columbia. The original purpose of this instrument was actually an ex- as an experiment in communication. Put simply, this instrument is a two-person flute. If you're curious as to what this looks like, imagine two musicians picking up the same flute and blowing it opposite ends. Okay, it's a little bit more sophisticated than that. Consisting of a flexible pipe, the tuca is bent in order to change the pressure within the tube. A sensor me- measures the pressure, and the note is synthesized. Any changes in pr- pressure will be reflected in the pitch. Probably the most interesting characteristic of this instrument is that in order to play it, two mus- the musicians must be able to effectively communicate using only body language. Here's a piece on the tuca. listening to is called the double slided controller. by Thomas Henrik, this instrument is essentially designed to be an electronic trombone with some added features. 
Like the name implies, this instrument has two controllers, which control certain aspects of the sound produced. These controllers are joysticks that have both buttons and toggles that control the different sounds. However, the most interesting sounds are produced when the instrument is treated like a trombone. Like a trombone, the musician blows into the mouthpiece and slides one of the controllers in order to manipulate the pitch of the note. The next instrument that we'll be showcasing is the Continuum Keyboard. This two-in-one instrument is both a performance controller and a synthesizer. Usually about 54 inches long, it looks like a keyboard whose keys have been replaced by a long, flat, flexible piece of red plastic.
It's a bit odd to call this instrument a keyboard, since it has no real keys per se. However, uh, that is where the continuum comes in. The technology in this instrument tracks exactly where a musician's fingers, finger is, and through different algorithms is able to synthesize a note. Probably the most unique characteristic of this instrument is the smooth transition between notes, which can be attributed to the instrument's ability to track a player's finger position. Now here's an improvi Im improvised piece on the continuum keyboard.
You've been listening to Terra Forte on KUPS Tacoma. We hope you've enjoyed this week's show. Like Terra Forte on Facebook for updates on the show and to see videos of some of the instruments we've heard today. Join us next week as we discuss some very cool stringed instruments and some rather unconventional orchestras. Until then, keep on exploring. <laughs>